what the business is. It is another week in the books with the On Deck TV podcast. I am Spike Lou. Man, holla at your boy Animal Brown. We got a brand new episode this week, all right? A couple of unreleased Wayne tracks pop up on SoundCloud. Security doesn't know who Quavo is, and Eminem dropped a Beyonce-like surprise. But first... Man, let's talk Young Jock. It's your man. Uh, he was caught in a, uh, well, not caught, but he was on video while working a ride-sharing job and uh, was uh, consequently clowned by the uh, riders in said ride-sharing car. Now, he went on to explain the reason he is working at a ride-sharing app called Pull Up and Go is to show people that you can have an honest living. Are you buying his explanation for it? I No, I'm not buying this explanation for it at all. I do think that it was a smart move to get the company pub. I I'm, I'm more so buy that he sit down with the company and they wanted Jock to be the spokesman and like, okay, how can we make this pop? And we go through this whole thing. Well, maybe they catch you driving an Uber because people love outrage nowadays. I could see that more so than I could see him trying to explain it on the back end. Uh, him trying to explain it on the back end, like, well, why are y'all shooting me anyway? Acting like he was salty about it. Like, nah. He had, If he had the ammunition that this was for the website when they were filming him, then he would have said that, I feel like, if it wasn't part of the plan anyway. So I feel like it was all a part of the plan for them to get it pumped up to get the stuff going towards their website. Yeah, because well, I've never heard of Pull Up and Go. Me. That's number one, until right. this right here happened. I don't know if it was a, a, a diabolical plan by Pull Up and Go, so to, say, so to say, but I do think 1,000% Jock is did this on purpose. Mm. He, he, the whole, like, you can make an honest living. Shut up. Ain't nobody trying. Like, that's that's 1,000% cap, dude. He's He has done this for the past three or four years, ever since he was on and off of Love and Hip Hop. He's found a way to do something online and go viral, much like we spoke about Boosie last week. And I feel like he knew what he was doing with the sweater. Mm -hmm. Jock 1,000% knew what he was doing working this rideshare app. He could do two, three rides, and by the third ride, somebody was going to recognize him, somebody was going to feel him, they? and you know what's going to happen with the rest. Yes. He does this every 12 months, man. Last time it was the Patty LaBelle hair, or whatever hair he looked like he had, or he had the blue shit where it was shaved on one side and wavy on the other. He worked like, on a radio station, though. How much pub you think he want? Man, people, hey, man, fame is the worst drug known to man. I think, I think that there's some smart, a smart young marketing team associated with this brand. And I feel like that they walked this from point A to point B. And, and they said, well, this is how people would react to it if you were driving the Uber. Because I'm not going to lie to you, fam. If, if Young Jock was to do a 30-second IG commercial and tell me that he's driving Pick Up and Go or whatever it's called to have kids that know that it's, man, click, scroll <laughs> this shit off my screen. Man, nobody want to see that shit. So I feel like this is the only way that people would have paid attention to it, and they, they did a successful job at it. I do agree with you, though. Young Jock does find a way to stay in the news. Uh, he's usually and, being laughed at, though. And you're talking about, like, them 15 minutes have been expired. That's there is no shade to Young Jock, but that... uh. The motorcycle is going down. Oh like, that's God. it, though. Like, he ain't got... At least Boosie has a whole catalog of hits. That's a, young relax. Jock, Ooh, way, young Jock has one song. <laughs> yeah, one song. A yeah, whole like, catalog of easy. hits. And what I mean by that, like, Boosie stays relevant because there's people out there, like, they're going to go to a Boosie show today. That's fair. Based off the mixtapes and, and just being a fan. He has a quote-unquote hive like, sure. for his level. And you're in it. Young Jock ain't got that. I am tough. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to a little. If Lil Boosie come perform the mixtape songs, no, no. I'm there. No. We there every day. All right, not the new shit, but the old shit 100%. <laughs> this nigga, he ain't selling out nothing. Nah, and we're going to get to some bookings later on. He, his name <laughs> might be on there. I don't believe that. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> so listen, over the past week... On SoundCloud, a brand new track listing and 10 songs of Lil Wayne popped up. Now, you may or may not have heard about that because it's 2000, not 2013. So here in 2020, I did beg to ask the question, if there was an artist who had an unreleased track, 10 track sessions, what artist would it be that you would want to hear? It'd be Kanye. Oh, my. We get, kind of, we get all his throwaway shit anyway with the gospel stuff. Like this, this nigga, this nigga been throwing putting throwaway albums out since no. uh, the return of Pablo, <laughs> the nigga life of Pablo, of them, whatever the fuck the name of that shit uh, is. It be yay. I, I'd want to hear like what Yandy sound like, stuff like that. His his unreleased tracks make noise. Wayne's unreleased tracks 
Crickets. Don't, don't do Wayne like that. Just because he's out of his prime. I listened to these songs. Did you? I did. Why? And you could tell they're dumb old. They're around the time of I Am Not a Human Being. Mm. I will say this though, they were fired though. No way. I swear, <laughs> yo. I this was better than quarter five. No. Like way. he should have put this out. Did you save him? Absolutely like, not. You, <laughs> no, we're not going. So, that far. do you had to go to SoundCloud to listen to yeah, it? Absolutely. That's whack. And they, they got they got loaded up by some dude or some gal, some dude, with, and and all of the tracks are written in like Korean or something. I don't know, but the songs are fire though. You think Wayne had anything to do with this? Nah, man, he don't know mm. what's going on. He don't know what SoundCloud is. Um, I'm the way any merge SoundCloud. I don't believe before. that. Uh, I'm definitely if I'm had if I had to uh, pick a rapper to listen to their unreleased tracks at one million percent, it's gonna be Jay. Like I, I don't still, even want to hear that though. Man. I do. I'm here for the unreleased Jay tracks going back, all the way back to like when he was still in the mix and and not rich billionaire Jay. I, fam, I don't want to hear anything Kanye. Let <laughs> you know that right now. But uh, I, I would love to hear some some Jay stuff that don't because. Jay a one take Jake type of rapper, right? Like For he's sure. noted throughout his career that he doesn't rap. I mean, well, doesn't write. I love to hear some of them takes that he had to throw away because he doesn't write. I love to hear how, where some of those directions were going and some things like that. Not fully finished unreleased songs, but maybe some directions spit, that he was taking. One hundred. Because if you look at uh, Fade to Black, the verse he put on, he rapped on "Dust Your Shoulders Off" ain't the verse that ended up being on the song. It sure, he wasn't. was still spitting though. Yeah, he was. So yeah, I, I get that, but I just feel like when artists they have throwaway songs, man, they sound like throwaway songs. Like that's why they didn't put them out. I don't mm. want to hear lost tapes. Or maybe they're sensitive, <laughs> like maybe sensitive subjects, things that have passed. Like you got Pusha T and Drake situation. I, let me hear that then. I don't want to hear them. Your goddamn <laughs> life. If, if, if Drake pulled up to the studio <laughs> right want- now and said, "Guys, I got the Pusha T diss song. Do you want to hear it?" So if you're you, saying yes, if you could hear the Drake. Drake, push your T diss song. I need it. Or the Biggie unreleased Pac diss. Which one you want to hear? The Drake push your T. Man. You understand? I want to hear the, the, the Biggie. You don't want to hear Biggie's no. diss on Pac. I'd rather hear Jay diss on Pac. If he got one, I hear that. Count me in for that. Nah. And push her and then Biggie's is third. That's the order. Third. Yes, and Flip Wayne's is 20th, even though I did listen to this because none of these other ones are available. You ran to listen to this. I listened to all 10 of these songs that were fire. I don't believe that. Go run them back. That's I, impossible. I, just search Lil Wayne. Uh, I think it's, uh, fuck, what is it called? It's something crazy. Is it on a streaming site other than SoundCloud? Nah. Ah, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. Moving they should have found a way to package this and put it out, though. Why not? It's better than Call to Fire. Uh, while in Paris Fashion Week, man, to support his fellow groupmate Offset, new clothing line, he's got a new collab, yep. shout out to Offset, Quavo wanted to join Cardi and Offset at the after party, but was denied entry because security couldn't tell it was him. There is a nice little viral video going around, the footage of that, of course, cameras are everywhere. This begs the question, who is the most famous Migo? Does that make Offset the most famous, famous Migo? Facts. It ain't even close anymore, thanks to Cardi. Uh, mm. The funny part about that video is he was pulling the tray from Boys in the Hood and fighting the L when he was swinging, <laughs> hitting people. Crazy. <laughs> Quavo went off. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure that I like him being that upset, though, about not being able to get in. It looked like that that struck him a little too, like it hit a nerve, yeah. like it could cause some sort of tension. And I'm only speculating here, okay. but it seems like... If he going off like that for like I mean in another country yeah, like uh, I mean okay people may miss not know who you are but for him to go in there be pissed off be swinging on people he swung on some of Beyonce dancers like they right. they the ones that got him in the club because they noticed him it just seems like that he may not be dealing <laughs> with not being the famous the most famous Migo. Well, uh, listen, he is not the most famous Migo right now. Quavo Offset has definitely passed him. Thanks to if you remember, they all all three of them put out solo joints. The only one that had any type of record that went at all was Offset featuring uh, Cardi. And that's the only song single that had a chance at any type of air. Um, unfortunately, Quavo is now in second place. And that's fine. He got him a little R&B. He got some sweetie. He got him a little celebrity relationship going on. And she got a little hit record. Duh. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of, you know, somewhat of a hit. Is it? But the question is, and this is the real question, where is Takeoff? 
Where's it? Somebody check on takeoff, please. It's another Migo? Yeah. <laughs> People may no not way. remember. There's a third Migo. <laughs> His name is Takeoff. Wow, where is he, he at? Was he there? Did I, they say? Bro, I haven't seen Doom. Let me Google Takeoff. <laughs> You're going to see a Google image from 2018. That's going to be the latest. <laughs> he dropped his project late 2018, and I promise I ain't heard from Doom since. I want them to check on him. I hope he's okay. Ah, I remember he was in the uh, James Corden. He was in the car looking he crazy. He was. <laughs> they did the uh, carpool karaoke. He, he was. He was in that. Looking, that was probably the last time they seen him. Somebody check on him, man. But Quavo got to chill, man. The security guard, number one, would have folded him. That's number one. <laughs> number two, you are overseas. It's nighttime. It's fashion week. That's not Migo crowd, so to speak. I'm not surprised they didn't recognize him. He and, uh, they were already gone, too. Cardi and Offset had left. <laughs> for the night By the time he had gotten there I don't know I just it They just, left him at the door It's rough right there Beyonce <laughs> dancers Getting in And being like Oh no that's Quavo And you not getting in Man Okay I can't kind of see Why he was talking about it. That's rough man Tough. What we got like before that. We get to this break Alright before we get To this break <laughs> Next Oh shit It's definitely your pick On a scale of 1 to 10 Right mm, Okay How impressed are you for That a rapper Let me tell What the fuck I can't even think of this guy's name You remember this guy's name um no oh shit well the rapper he went and rapped for 31 hours straight mm. and he made the guinness's book of world records how impressed of you by this feat of this rapper um shout out to uh freezy frzy breaks yeah frzy freezy from pittsburgh rap 31 hours straight on a scale of one to ten i am impressed a thousand i don't believe it um he took a five minute break every hour to do anything for 31 hours straight is amazing. Like any, I'm literally anything. He took an I, hour break in between, right? Well, he took a five minute break every <laughs> hour. That is impressive. Now, he was freestyling, so he wasn't talking about shit. <laughs> Let's be very clear about that. He wasn't ripping it. He's not going to get no deal. None of that shit. Right. However, if you're asking me how impressed I am, that's very impressive. 31 hours straight is a long time. And I don't know why the fuck he even wanted to do this to begin with. Would you still be impressed if you found out Uh-oh. that they have to pay to get in the Guinness's Book of World Records? Oh, come on, man. He why? paid $695 for this in hopes of sponsorship and to be able to capitalize off of being the longest freestyle rapper. Oh, well, he might get some streams off of this, though. Man, ain't nobody <laughs> looking this nigga up, man. You just wasted $600. <laughs> uh, first of all, that's interesting. I didn't know you had to pay $600 to get into Guinness's Book of World Records. No wonder them books be so, like, yeah, well done every year. They take robbing all these people, these dumbass uh, awards each year, but each person pays six hundred ninety five dollars to be listening. thirty one hours straight. Dog, there's video of this too. It's not thirty one hours long. It's just a short clip. He was just talking for thirty one hours. No, he was dude. he was rapping. He was ripping it. Where is it? I'm looking at this tape. I'm trying to freezy man. I am about to so download this tape. When it gets to thirty one hours straight of rapping, like what do you even consider? Like, do the words still have to rhyme? Like, he's clearly not making sense anymore. And he was doing it at the mall. So that there was like a little crowd in there. Niggas <laughs> just throwing pennies at him and shit. Shout out nah, to Freezy, nah, man. man. That's that. I mean, if that's what you want to do impressed? to capitalize. No. Uh, okay, I'm impressed at the, the approach that he's taking a thousand ways to make money in rap. So if he's going to capitalize off this $695 investment, I'm here for it. Don't worry. Somebody will break this in like a two years and he'll be, <laughs> some, <laughs> it'll be long yeah, forgotten. Some, some person from somewhere else will do it and. <laughs> there you go. Thirty one hours and fifty minutes after they pay they six ninety five too. Absolutely, man. Hey, listen, don't go nowhere. Take a break real quick. We're gonna talk this Eminem album. Lou is ecstatic to talk about we it. We have to. <laughs> Let's get it. Flash back. Come on with that T V. That's your boy motherfucking Gucci and the motherfucking wearing zone. D we wear zone three, right? We zone shit forever. Star man. It's a movement, man. Cashmere ATL. Bow. Man, we are back. See on Deck TV podcast. It's your man, Animal Brown. I am Spike Lou. Hey, Eminem dropped out of the blue. Your wishes have been granted. I know you were waiting on this. TA. Music to be murdered by the oh, 11th, no, oh, 12th awesome. album by Eminem. Did you know he had 12 albums? Man, these last four like, should be one album. So I ain't even counting these last. Like, he got the last ain't he dropped four albums in the last two years? No, he's he dropped has. two albums in the last two years. Hey, man, not. <laughs> Yeah, he responded to one album because nobody liked the album. That's three. <laughs> and this one. <laughs> Last, in 2018, in August of 2018, he dropped Kamikaze. And then before that? Uh, it was probably like a year before that when he dropped that, the other shit that he was responding to because people hated it. With so many words. As they should. 2017 was Revival. 
Um, and this is his 11th studio album. Y'all know how we get down. Um, we're going to do initial thoughts, excuse me, expectations, initial thoughts, highlights, lowlights. And then we're going to finally give it a rating before we have a couple of questions regarding Eminem um, and his career moving forward. What were your expectations going into this uh, music to be murdered by from Slim Shady himself? As you mentioned prior to there was no lead up to this. Um uh, I am kind of disappointed because there were rumblings on the internets that a major artist was going to drop within the next two weeks, and that was about two weeks ago. And now we have this Eminem album, and I am thoroughly disappointed <laughs> that this was the major artist that they were speaking of. <laughs> that being said, uh, I did open up my app on Friday and seen a brand new Eminem, thought it was, you know, okay, cool. Interesting title, though. Music to be murdered by taken from Alfred Hitchcock. Yep. Um, cool. I mean, like nice title. You know what would have been fire? Uh, just, just to say, as I opened this, I wasn't expecting a lot. I knew it was going to be a lot of rap, and I knew it was going to be Eminem. But I did kind of get excited after I was disappointed because okay. music to be murdered by. I thought, hey, maybe this is a theme. Maybe Eminem is coming out with a themed album, and it's going to give me something different from all of this rapping that he's been doing for the last three years. Okay. That's what I thought. What'd you think? Uh, I had no expectations, and I think him dropping out of the blue was smart because he's at a place in his career where he's he's out of his prime. He's past his prime, but he's still held in a high regard to a lot of people. Um, but so when he announces something that's coming soon, people's expectations get way too high for his ability at this point to make music. So how do you temper that? You just drop out of the blue to where people have no expectations, good, bad, or indifferent. And that way people can kind of come at it with a clean slate. Uh, I think that was smart, and that's why I came at it. I had none. I wasn't expecting this at all. There was no, hey, Eminem might be dropping this, that. I thought the last one was in 2018. I didn't think we was going to hear from Dude for at least another three years. You didn't want to hear from him. For nah, I actually like the last project, though. That was probably one of his best joints in a long time because he was on a cold streak. Of about five projects that were terrible, and that last one was cool. I don't think the Eminem actually has lost the ability to make good music. Still, I just don't think that he's making music that he wants to make. Uh, even with this album and listening to it, like it's still songs on here that like it seems as if that he's trying to be on the charts. Or he does you, that all the time, though. Right, and your Eminem, like you said, you are past the prime of your career where the expectations aren't or shouldn't be for you to do a song with Ed Sheeran or the next pop star and for it to be a number one single, Eminem should be at a point where he can just release music that he likes to and can bask in the ability of just being a phenomenal rapper as opposed to a pop star. So you want a concept album from him? That you want been, a good kid, Mad City, whatever that looks like for him? That would have been cool. It would have been better than like... 20 tracks of Eminem rapping still <laughs> in 2008 and it's like I've never been the biggest Eminem fan it's just it comes down to like I, I feel like relatability and at this stage in his career to what you're saying it's not that he can't make the music is that he's trying to make music that he's always made and he's just not that person anymore like I don't care to hear shock rap from a, a 40 year old white guy anymore but I do know forty seven, whatever. <laughs> but I do know that he's an intelligent guy. He has very interesting like approaches to shit. So I, I'm sure that he could tell a dope story. Still, he could still definitely raps. He still make good beats and can ride a beat like no other right. person. So it, it ain't the fact that he can't make music. It's just like don't nobody want to hear this. No, nah, he can't make music, bro. That's, that's and, not true. But he can rap. Yeah, yeah. He has you a lot of say that He can't make music, and Kanye West can. Yeah, of That's course. That's impossible. He's a producer. So it's a little bit cheap. It's a cheap. Yeah, producers. Yeah, but it'd be some slaw. Nah, um, Kanye West stand. He can listen. Eminem can still rap. He hasn't lost a step when it comes to the bars and the entertaining lines and the double entendres and all of the acrobats that come acrobatics that come with him spitting. He can still do that. His music has no replay value anymore. It like, never did. That's where that's a goddamn it lie. It never did. He got he got a classic. One. And that was his first album. No, that was a that second. That was twenty five years ago. That was the second album. Yeah, and you talking about want to talk about replay the, value? The Marshall Mathers EP was the second <laughs> LP was the second cool, album. Cool. And it's a classic. That's fine. And his first three are fire. Let me tell you the last time I listened to that. 
What does that exactly. mean? Exactly. You said replay value. <laughs> He's never had replay value. So if his classic doesn't have replay value, nothing else will. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that this is his problem with the the ones that came out, the relapse and the recovery and all that shit. But that, zero replay value. He tried to swing for the fences with the Skylar Grays and all of those big name uh, R&B pop acts on the hook, trying to make stadium and arena wreck. Man, that shit, that shit is complete. I give you that. No, nobody want to hear the big stadium Ed Sheeran joint. Like I'm super good on that. He doesn't have to do that. It's pointless at this point. It's almost like dumb, cause, fam. Even I don't plan on seeing Eminem on tour. Do you think he's gonna hit the road? No, I don't so think he want to. Why would you even? That's my point. Why are you even making stadium music and these big pop songs? Like you're not even gonna be in any place <laughs> where you're gonna be able to perform it. Like it would be much like. Like big time comedians, Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy, like even at this point, they go do small clubs. True. Like to work on their material. Man, if he had a came out with a concept album and went to like small venues, performed it and shit like that throughout the country, man, he would have fucking bodied it. That had been hard. Like white people can do weird shit like that, man. That'd have been and hard. He would have killed that, but like music to be murdered by and the whole like thing, like man, nah, that's here, some good bro. shit on here. Don't do it, that. There's some good shit okay. on here, but like at this stage in his career, as you stated, like I just, I'm cool. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what worked for me on here. Okay. Um, number one, he set the tone early. Uh, he should be brought up on charges. The premeditated murder on Young and May on that first joint. Like he set her up to fry. Like she he came out that. first, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Like she snapped on him, and then he came in after her and completely obliterated. I was like, "Man, come on!" She and killed that though. No, she was ripping. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He came in and just did her dirty though. Like I'm like he was. Bazin on there. I thought that was super tough. Like I said, he still has the bars. He still has the flow. He hasn't lost a step in that department. His voice has kind of come back to where it originally was. Like voice is a big, a big, big thing for me. Mm -hmm. And some people, when they start to fall off, their voices change and it don't hit the same. That's why I can't fuck with Cam new shit. His voice isn't the same. That's what happened to Shine. Joel's voice ain't the same no more. It just doesn't hit. And M's voice had kind of got different, and if right. he fell off to me. Like when I saw when he maybe a couple of years ago, these last two, his voice has come back to normal. So that is a good thing. Um, you said he doesn't tell stories. The darkness was, bro, that I didn't song. I say that. I said nobody wanted to hear the stories. The darkness, which is a story, which if you're listening, you think he's talking about from an artist perspective getting ready to perform. But he's really talking about the sniper dude that's ready to shoot up the concert. He was rapping his ass off on there, painting a picture. That was throwback M on that joint. And then the one with Royce, uh, the You Gonna Learn, I thought that was fire. And um, no regrets with Tom, with Don Tolliver, who was a star in the making. Uh, Travis Scott got one with him. He he dope. That song was fire as well. You high on this Don Tolliver kid. He got a new single out too that's kind of on the radio that's moving a little bit. Uh, that's called No Idea. That's kind of fire too. <clears throat> but what you th what did what worked on here for you? The intro one million percent worked for me. The premonition like he was killing that. I like the way that he brought in the album. That's some classic M shit. I like the song with Young and May as well. Um, also, I love the song with Slaughterhouse. I like well three fourths mm. of Slaughterhouse. I will. I think that that was dope. Uh, he had a little Joe Button diss in there. Um, <laughs> I like. <sighs> Don't do that. I like the song with Juice World. I do like the song with Juice World as well. I, I think that. That was a an, a an appropriate record if he was going to feature Juice Roll. I don't think that he was milking it or anything like that. Right. But I do think that was a very appropriate record for to him to feature on that. So I like that. And that's a collab you wouldn't even necessarily you wouldn't have thought, have thought about it, and it sounded a lot better than it reads. I agree. So I and that's where it stops for me though. Oh my god! I mean, that's where, fam. No one is sitting through an hour of Eminem. What is this? An hour and four minutes? It's not. It's not that bad. I'm not saying it's bad. I didn't say it was that bad. I'm just, you, you go through it once, the replay value is gone, like I said, and then that's it. I like, like Farewell, though. You need to double back on a couple of these, though. He's rapping his ass off, but I didn't hear anything where I was like, oh, this shit, let me let me run that back. Like, I heard something with, like, damn, him rapping his ass off, but you've been saying that for 20 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, I know he raps his ass off. That's cool. And a lot of this is just me. I've never been a big Eminem fan. I will admit that wholeheartedly. Been I know a he hater. can rap his ass off. I'm definitely not a hater. You've been a hater. You know what I'm saying? He does his thing. It's just, okay, it's cool. I'm going to tell you what, di what didn't work. You mentioned the Slaughterhouse joint. This would have been the perfect opportunity for a moment in this slow period of hip hop in 2020. Sure. If he would have had Joe Button on there with all of Slaughterhouse, that would have given this project some more life, some depth, 
this would have gave people a reason to check for it. That'd have been a cool little moment. It'd have been like a little control type verse. Yeah, I mean, just no, just just he something. Where, everybody had been going in on him too. I'm sure Joe's verse would have been three minutes long by and itself because it he f- would have been fired. He would have been snapping for yeah. sure. But I think that was a missed opportunity for this for the slow time in, in hip hop right now. While we Man, these big like dogs Joe, are gonna, yeah, I know, but. Over. People squash it all the time. People beef and they squash. He got bars about him in the song. Yeah, I'm just saying it was his missed opportunity. <laughs> it man. was. I see that. That would have been cool. Um, a couple of joints I absolutely hated. The Leaving Heaven with Skylar Grace is trash. Um, the Little Engine is terrible, and the Ya Ya with uh, Royce the Five Nine was was garbage too with the Busta Rhymes sample. That shit was ass. Anything um, with a Busta Rhymes sample. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Busta Rhymes, so I'm sorry, Busta, but that that song was that wasn't it. You're a Busta Rhymes hater. Uh, Royce the Five Nine is sh- rapping his ass off right now. He's right? the second best uh, slaughterhouse member behind Crooked Eye. That's not true. Yeah, Royce probably the best. Either Royce or Joe are the best. Crooked Eye's probably the last. Joe's retired. Um, true. <laughs> so Royce is the best. <laughs> now, Crooked is number one. Do you, have you ever? And I'm. This is a stolen thought. Speaking of Joe, and I want to know what you think because you, you like Royce, right? Yeah, I fuck with him. Do you think that Royce, being the quality of rapper that he is, and having the same machine that Eminem had with Paul Rosenberg and Interscope at that point in time, or whoever it was, do you think that he should feel a sort a certain way that he's not a bigger star? No. Why? Because he doesn't. He don't make star type of records. He's not but doing he a song. Like if with you got Ed that Sheeran. machine, that M got you can though. Like all the motherfucker had to do was come in the studio and be like, "Look, Royce, we want you to do this." And you're going to sell 10 million records. Do you want to hear Royce and Skylar Gray? I'm Do like, you want on. to sell 10 million records? Yes or no? He That's said the he, question. He, he's cool with where he at, though. I think uh, he's content. It's not like he broke. No, I'm, I'm, I'm you know what I mean? million percent not saying that, but just someone whose skill level, Royce probably one of the top five. People rapping right now, Relax. he probably top five. Relax. And that's easy. <laughs> With that being said, he's always been a dope rapper, and to have that much skill and to be sitting behind, near, have a close relationship to the biggest rapper in the world. One of them. You would think that he would have had a better career. Well, you can't outshine the master number one. You can at least get the look, son. <laughs> My nigga got you. You can't have me in the shade either. <laughs> Royce is respected by his peers. He's had a he's a veteran in the game. He's had a long respected career. I think he's cool with that. I just don't see him making the type of music that gets him like he wasn't making one hundred six in Park type shit. He could have. Eminem was. Obi Trice was on one hundred six in Park now. Obi Trice, do Obi Trice was hard though. Be not better than Royce. Where's Obi Trice at now? That's a good point. <laughs> he just got Where locked up Obi for Trice? shooting his. Uh, Did he? He shot his wife's son. They need a hip hop true crime podcast. That'll be fire. Yeah, that's true. I can see that. We I got. We got work on that. that. Yeah, we're gonna cut edit that, that out. out. We're gonna cut gonna that out. Edit that out. Uh, yeah, no, nah, but um, so yeah, those are the joints that didn't work for me. Um, anything specifically that just stuck at you, just like man, what the what rest of the to? album, oh, that anything God. that I didn't name didn't work for me. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Well, and and like I say, this is not me saying that Eminem can't rap or he can't make good music because I still think that he can do all of that. It's just like this is like Tom Brady trying to go out and throw seventy passes in the Super Bowl. Or like LeBron <laughs> going up and putting up fifty shots. Like you, you, you've done it, bro. We know you're good. Yeah, you ain't gotta come do all of that no more. Just let your greatness speak for itself. And I feel like not even just this album, but following the albums and and just even dropping it like as consistently as he is now. Like, fam, and, and it doesn't even seem like he's enjoying it. It ain't like he out he here and he's bitter. like, yeah, it ain't like he out here and he like, yeah, I got the passion back for rap. It's like oh, I gotta do this shit again, and then you throw this mean music out. So. <laughs> I, I say that to say, like, it just, nigga, if you don't enjoy it, bye. You can retire. We'd be cool with it. You had a great career. You're not, you're going to the Raptors. We'd be fine with that. that which I have questions regarding that in just a second, but okay. I'm going to give my rating. If if I had to give this a scale to one to five reels, I'd give it two and a half. It's some look cool. Uh, it's just a step under the one from, I think he regressed from Kamikaze, which I actually liked, mm-hmm. but this is better than the joints that were before Kamikaze, like Recovery and uh, Relapse and all of that shit. So it's right in between. It's it's slightly above average Eminem music in 2020. I'm going two, mm. just two below average. Below average. Below average for someone of his ilk. Oh, that's fair enough. I've got two questions. Speaking okay. of two, M is 47. 
Over or under two and a half more albums for Eminem? Hopefully under. No, Way under. Fuck hopefully. And I, what do you think he is going to do? Uh, I see no reason that he would drop another album. He would have announced that this was the last one. You have to have a farewell tour is if you're it? a rapper if this is a last project. You just don't drop a last one and then never say nothing. Especially nobody like him. But Eminem, that would, if anybody would do that, it would be him. I could see this that. Would be, people would be like, oh, you remember that last Eminem album? You have to go back and decipher he, what he said he was retiring and nah. shit like that. He, he would go on his whole like Dirk run, Dwayne Wade run, where you got to swap jerseys every night. He would do it big in style if, he, if this is his last joint. He would have to enjoy doing this, and I don't think he does. Like I did, like, can you see Eminem like doing the the victory lap? I can, yeah. Like, he get doing, all like all the people he fuck with on the records and shit. Like it, it'll be dope. It'd be like a compilation. Almost. Absolutely not. Uh, I'm saying, I'm saying none I'm over. I think he's got three more. I'm calling that now. And three more albums from Eminem is nasty. My second question and final question before we get out of here. Is it hurting his legacy that he keeps making music? Yes. Well, actually, nah. His legacy solidified. Uh, as you can't be as good as he is at rapping and people forget about you or it be overshadowed because you put out a couple of bad projects or a couple of projects past your prime. Right. I think that his place will forever stand where he is because, I mean, if you want to get down to it, he probably was the first good white rapper. The like one that he, people took seriously. Yeah, that you could, like shit. bars. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to line him up with the other people that rap, and, and he going to be able to to hold his own. He was the first person to do that, and he'll forever have his name solidified in the history for that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this These are small chinks in his armor. This is Kobe when he got injured. We got the Achilles two or three years in a row. But still, you, you knew he could put up joints, and he got rings. So mm-hmm. I agree. But I'm saying that now. If you give me three more albums, <laughs> think you can three albums that'll put him out of there. Now listen, you give me three more. If, if they're just garbage and like you like Larry Holmes, flabby and sick, then now we're gonna be looking like, bruh, you staying your past your welcome. Now we're gonna be t- taking you off your mount the Mount Rushmore that some people got you on. But why would Eminem do that though? He, got, he, he do, likes rapping. Don't you? Th- no, I don't believe it. He's coming off bitter because people are shitting on his records, do you and that's th- giving him life in itself right there. That's his motivation. Do you not think that he's satisfied with his career? What would you say oh, as a fan? Yeah. You think he's satisfied? No, why would I skip? I'm not dropping no more albums. People then. got passion for that shit, dog. He don't got no passion. Will Smith finna start back rapping. Why? Because he's got passion for this shit. No. <laughs> not he's not why. doing it for a check. Well, he's doing it because what you said, like, he enjoy, and this is just me speculating here. That's a good person to bring up in comparison to because I feel like that Will Smith is a person that you can look at and you can tell from the Instagram and all the interviews and the things that he He's does. He enjoys this shit. Yeah, yeah, this nigga yeah. fucking planked on or jumped off the top of that big ass brie. Like, he wake <laughs> up every day to do this shit, nigga. I am Will Smith. I'm finna go get my Will Smith on. For sure. Eminem, like, it's like you got a fucking the nigga bought a Taco Bell and put it at his house. Like how lame is that, dude? No, I can respect. I that don't even have to leave. I, I just want to walk to Taco Bell because I don't like people that much. I can respect. And I want to stay. I mean, it's cool. I want a Taco Bell in my until house. you want to go somewhere and like meet people oh, and be like cordial. I just don't think that he's that type of guy. Like he ain't never going. He's too famous it. for that shit, bro. Fam. You don't want to go to the grocery Fam. store and have a thousand motherfuckers in comparison lined up to, to Will Bell? Smith. Will Smith ain't going to Taco Bell. He might, yeah, because he can't. He's too famous. That's what I'm... My point is, Will Smith and him are just as famous, and Will Smith enjoys this shit, and Eminem doesn't. Will Smith is just as famous as Eminem? More famous. Way more famous than Eminem. Two times more famous. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, 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 he is. No, he is. Uh, You said they were on equal playing ground. I did not. I just said he was two times more famous. Fair enough. Yeah. Right, man, y'all let us know what y'all think about this M surprise Beyonce project that he dropped out of the blue. Uh, go to Facebook... Rap chat, search for the groups. Let us know how you feel about it, man. Give us a rating. Yep, let us know how you feel about this Eminem. Also, let us know um, everything else as far as the quickest. Go and leave the comments, feedback on the show, interact, have and fun. Over or under two and a half albums left for him. I want to know. I'm curious. He's 47. That You know what I mean? AJ ain't really don't mean the same now in hip hop as it did 20 years ago. But still, at some point, it's like, okay, M at 50 being angry, like now nah, you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, nah, like you should be retired right now. Bro. Like you you're overdoing just, you're it. So, bro, come on. Let us know, man. Hey, and also let us know who is the most famous Migo. <laughs> Go to the rap chat. Tell us who is the most famous Migo, so we can show it to Quavo and he can get mad. Dirt. <laughs> hey, we'll be back. Don't go nowhere. Yep. 
What's going on on Deck TV listeners? It's your boy Jay Ho from the Full Sport Press Podcast featuring myself, Jeff, and Wheezy each and every Monday. Once you're finished with this action-packed episode of the On Deck TV podcast, check out episode 304. We are handing out the 2019-2020 Midseason NBA Awards, FSP style. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Man, we are back. See on Deck TV podcast. This is man Animal Brown. I am Spike Lou. Hey, man, it is time to check these booking prices. This is the first one of 2020. Yeah. If you are new to the show, every once in a while we get these booking emails, man. We want to see how much it's going to cost to book your favorite artist mm -hmm. right now. We've got the numbers right in front of us. This is shout out to BPE Agency. This is legit. It's legit. All right. This Free is like how OJ all day. At 100%. This is how people book their, their shows, right? Um. All right. First of all, give me one that's jumping out to you, off the top. I probably say this every time that we look at these. Okay. But fuck it. All right. I'm gonna do it again. Tiger gets 110k to show up places. I am in the wrong industry. <laughs> Tiger gets a hundred and ten k to show up places. First of all, that's his if ticket. If that didn't on jump here. out to you, that's his ticket. Listen, if that if that is his ticket, BPE agency, y'all aren't getting no calls for Tiger. Like it's dead. Nobody's paying him one hundred and ten bands, bro. Mm. Nobody. He ain't getting no shows. You go on his IG right now. I guarantee you, it's dry. He's not going. He's not in front of no crowd. He had two hits last year, didn't he? He had the taste. That, doo, doo, doo. that was two that was years two ago. Years ago when, and then he had he kind of had a little bit of one after that. I don't know. I think he's been putting up numbers. I still ain't giving him one ten. If you think that's nuts, okay. Let me tell you what jumped out to me. What was that? They have the baby on here for two hundred to two hundred and fifty. <laughs> now I'm starting to question the validity of this list that we've been using for years. Um. Now I'm looking like I'm finna get scammed, or it's a typo. Well, no, because there's man. If the baby's getting two hundred and fifty thousand, he wouldn't be beating up promoters over ten. Simpo <laughs> like it, that doesn't make sense. Now I'm looking at him like he crazy. They probably whew, damn man. How much would they take of this? That means yeah. I mean that mean the baby think he's only getting forty. <laughs> and <they> Shit. <laughs> Right, he's Ooh. not. If you call these people and say we got two hundred thousand, they're, they're gonna hang up in your face because they think you trolling, you catfishing, or you setting them up. There's no way on God's Where green you think earth. He at? But he just the, the reason he beat up dude, he got paid forty for that show. That was like a year ago though. No, I don't it was. Believe that. It was a year ago. It was a long time ago when he beat that dude up. It just came out. It oh, wasn't like a week ago when he did that. Oh, uh, uh, well, I don't know. He that didn't jump. He ain't blown up that quick. And I fuck with him, but he, he not hide his name in rap. I, I can't. I mean, okay. In comparison to when, like, let's say, or Lil Wayne was hot. How much you think that he was getting? First of all, Lil Wayne hot, <laughs> and the baby hot are two <laughs> completely <laughs> different <laughs> ovens, nigga. Like that. <laughs> First of all, that's the, the brick oven at CPK. That's facts. Okay. <laughs> so what 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 would you say, Lil Baby gets seventy five? Uh, Lil Baby. The baby, excuse me. The baby. Yeah, I'd say about seventy. I mean, and I'm talking about that's like at a university that got money to blow. Vanderbilt. Yeah, they, like they 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 giving them seventy. They you getting a hundred, man. He got to get a hundred. At Vanderbilt. Yeah. He I mean, maybe, maybe, because they they you know you tax the universities. Yeah. Uh, speaking of little baby, he's on here for eighty five. Worth it. Bro, you're not getting your money. You so mad. Worth it. If you're a promoter, you're so mad at the end of that night. Worth <laughs> every penny. You can't even. The baby, the hottest rapper in the game. You can't even afford to pull up and Lil, go. The baby, the hottest home. rapper in the game, fam. Did you see what him and Future did in Atlanta the other night? No, what yeah. I missed. What happened? Packed it. Mm. Standing room only. When you were there? The Wizard and Lil Baby. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> if, uh, I'm looking at this list and I'm looking at some of the young cats on here. Okay. Um, I'm looking at my boy. I'm looking at Lil Key. It's not my boy. I'm just saying. I'm you looking at a that, young you cat. Just said it was your boy. Yeah, I know. I take that back. My boy Boosie get forty thousand still. He's been getting forty since for forty years. I refuse do. to believe it. It's still that's, forty. That's what we do over here, it's the mob. That's why he had the he had the game. Now you ain't seen him at a show in fact because he's still taxing forty. <laughs> he course, that's why he get to go to the Hawks game. <laughs> he had the Hawks games now. That's what we see him at. He wasn't performing in that Capitol Swell to do. He says where they on here for eleven thousand. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking at the young cats. Look, he on here for 15. Uh, I, I think you can do something with him and maybe like a um, 
stunning for Vegas. He 18. You could put like a young boy show, a little young millennial, 21, 22 and under show. Uh, NLE Chop on here for 20. So uh, you got a little 50 bag. I think you can get all three of them for 50, have a little show on the A or shake, a little teen night. How much are you paying security? Yeah, like security gonna be more than 150. <laughs> <laughs> like security that, getting the baby numbers. That's for what that. I would worry about security uh, from that one. And then hold on though, okay. real quick, who I'm gonna have hosted? Mm. Where's my girl at on here? Oh, man, my, man. Malaya on here for 3,500. I don't even know. Malaya's who hosting it. What? Malaya. The little stripper guy. Oh, the drink the, tell Malaya, Malaya, Malaya I'm on fire tonight. Listen, mm. you can take these five and keep the change. <laughs> She's hosting it. I'm shaking the party. That's a. I don't know. You gotta have security for Malaya. <laughs> um, for my for my dream lineup, okay, I'm blowing the bag. Mm-hmm. Homecoming, prominent HBCU. I like that. We're going the baby. You broke I'm already. Giving, you I'm can't give, afford nobody I'm else. Giving already. them two hundred k is homecoming. Tickets a hundred dollars. Let's okay. go. I'm going the baby. I'm going NBA young boy. How much is he on? A hundred. Man. Three hundred thousand dollars show, Bruh. the baby <laughs> NBA young boy. My guy, two chains, bro. That's the homecoming show. What is this Yale? Packing nigga, it what out. Yes. Where this bread come from? It's Duke. Duke. <laughs> this is the homecoming show at Duke. All right, fam. <laughs> that motherfucker shaking, dude. <laughs> <Tough. laughs> hey man, this list is nuts. Just a couple of quick ones. Mike Jones and a little flip on here for five thousand a piece. Are you doing the throwback H Town Houston? No. Show? All right. Uh, Light skin Keisha on here for twenty five. You, you know who that is? You can't name a song. I do. I know who it is. But eighteen to twenty five thousand. Yeah, K. Nah, that's a misprint. Cash dog twenty to twenty five K. That's a misprint. You really can't say nothing bad about like the ladies' prices on here because it's gonna sound like you like a chauvinist. I'm I look, I'm shitting on a lot of people. Meg on here for a hundred. The Meg wait Meg is a hundred and the baby is two fifty. Yes. <laughs> Man, I mean, uh, <laughs> women get paid less than men in the ring. I mean, <laughs> shit, that happens, WNBA right? now. That's a thing, right? That's what they say. <laughs> shit. 21 Savage being on here for 125, crazy too. I ain't giving 21 Savage 125 right now. No, not right now. When he drops something new, you can, he gets 60 for sure. Speaking of the Migos, they are the highest priced group on here, 250 to 300K. Nigga, they're the only group out right now. The highest priced people on here. At 300K. Offset is 150. Quavo is 150. Where is Takeoff's name? Is he on his list? No. God damn. That's Takeoff. crazy. Y'all didn't even got me listed. I got a problem with everybody in management. <laughs> I'd be on the phone. Like, nigga, man, I don't care if I am on down the list. Y'all at least got to say something. If Quavo is 150 and Offset is 150, how much is Takeoff? 75. Yeah, because he ain't even on Bad and Bougie. Like, you can't even perform that. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I can't have a Miko and you can't even perform Bad and Bougie. <laughs> he going to stand there and do a uh, Uzi part. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, man, let us know. Who are you booking for your dream scenario? Does this make sense? Is the baby at 200? Does that make sense for him right now where he is in the game? I don't think so, even though he did just do SNL. That was a big look. And give me some shit with some bop in it. Who just did SNL, the baby? Yeah. Griselda's going to be on Jimmy Kimmel, and that is wild uh, I don't me. know. I don't know what they're going to perform. Uh, like, what are they? Not but Jimmy Fallon, excuse me. Yeah, I, what, I don't, what song are they going to do? I don't know. I, I want to see it. Um, Happy for him, though. Shout out to, let's go on deck of the week, man. Um, shout out to. Retro J1026 added me you. on Twitter this ye- uh, Excuse me, this week. Appreciate you for checking us out. He was checking out Is the Mic Still On from the Dead End Guys. And I All was right. uh, lucky enough to be featured on a couple of their conversations. And he came to the On Deck TV podcast. He said he went back okay. all the way to the beginning of the archives and listened to the 50 Cent discussion. I shout remember getting ready for that show. Absolutely. Shout out to you, Retro J1026. And fun fact, that is not our first episode. It's not. That is the first episode on this feed. We have a whole other old feed that's got like 60 episodes on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so you check got that 60 out. more to listen to, Retro J. <laughs> we appreciate you. Good looking, man. Uh, before we get out of here, you got something to put me on or off. Which one? Yes. Uh, I did a book the first week. I did a TV show. So I got to finally. This is a music podcast. Bank Roll Freddy. Y'all check out my guy, new QC artist, dropped over the past week. I can't, what's the name of his tape? I'll look it up while you're telling me what you got to look out for. I've but been. as an artist, y'all check out my guy, Bankroll Freddy. I like the young kid. I like the mu- mu- music there you go. that he's making. And uh, I'm 
anxious to see is he going to be the next star from the QC camp. From so, Trap to Rap is the name of his project. Is bank, that the one you're talking about? Yeah, that's the last one. He got a. I've, I've, I've been seeing his name a lot though. Bank Roll Freddy, baby. Remember, I called him just like I called Lil Baby two years ago. Oh my God. I didn't? No. First Breakfast Club interview, I said it. I said he's going to be the biggest rapper in the game. Give him two years. You said it after Pull he the had tape. This, oh my Pull God. the tape. Retro J can confirm. You said this when he did the song with Drake. Absolutely did not. <laughs> oh, he's the biggest this nigga. Stop. He blew Drake back up. Oh my god. Gave Drake some street cred. Uh, I'm gonna put you on. So I mentioned the movies last week. I was gonna okay. go see that Bad Boys. I'm officially putting the stamp on it. Two thumbs up. Y'all go check out that Bad Boys for so life. You're putting the people on a movie that did the highest number <laughs> of sales yes. over a holiday weekend yes. ever in the history of movies. Yes. For yo, those people that didn't <laughs> see it, y'all check out Bad Boys. <laughs> it could have been trash. I'm here to tell you, don't worry. It wasn't trash. It was fire. Yeah. And they finna set up hella sequels like Fast and the Furious. That's what I do. What they have children or something? Nah. I'm not gonna spoil nothing. Well, how, how they gonna do more? Don't worry, but you gotta go see man, it. Them niggas is old, man. This is <laughs> it. <laughs> I fuck with Will stamp. and Martin, but that that's a wrap, buddy. I, I was scared because Martin ain't the same Martin. Have you peeped that? Like his energy not really the same. He old. He old. So Martin. is Will. And well, they both old. Will still got the Will same still, energy. Man, Will still Will though. Will like a kid. No, nah, something like, happened with Martin, bro. No, nah, because Eddie Murphy that time, like Eddie Murphy, like kind of more reserved. Yeah, kinda like, like he off like a little bit, not off, but just not the same as they old. Man. Martin talk like Tracy Morgan now. That's not true. And it's, it's that's something. not true. It's just, it's something <laughs> that's not true because right. Tracy Morgan was in an accident. That's what I'm saying. What he talk like? Well, Martin smokes a lot of weed. I've heard we allegedly. Don't, we don't do that though. Shit, he's smoking, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> My head is thunder. We stay in Cali too. Shit. I don't want to stay good now. Nah. Oh, uh, shit. All right, man. Hey, listen. Again, uh, youtube.com slash realville. Check out uh, our show and FSP is now on there as well. Make sure you subscribe to that YouTube as well. Yeah, man. The YouTube switch. So y'all make sure y'all go subscribe to that other page, Patreon. Y'all go check that out as well. Everything that's going on with the network. We appreciate you and bearing with us for the format switch we appreciate the feedback that we've gotten on that so we're gonna keep it coming for you absolutely man we'll see y'all next week peace